Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 11 to 20 for the CompTIA Sizer Plus exam. Let's begin. Which of the following is the best action to take after the conclusion of a security incident to improve incident response in the future? The correct answer is B. Schedule a review with all teams to discuss what occurred. Conducting a post-incident review, also known as a lessons learned meeting, is the most effective action to improve future incident response. It allows teams to analyze what went well, what failed, and how response processes can be strengthened. This step feeds directly into refining playbooks, improving communication, and closing procedural gaps. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Develop a call tree to inform impacted users. While helpful for future communication, this is a tactical step. It doesn't directly improve incident handling or address what went wrong during the response. C. Create an executive summary to update company leadership. This helps inform leadership but doesn't actively contribute to improving technical or procedural response capabilities. D. Review regulatory compliance with public relations for official notification. This is important for external communications and legal obligations, but it's a compliance step, not a method for improving internal incident response. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A security analyst received a malicious binary file to analyze. Which of the following is the best technique to perform the analysis? The correct answer is C. Reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is the best technique to analyze a malicious binary file, especially when source code is unavailable. It involves deconstructing the binary using tools like disassemblers or debuggers to understand its behavior, functionality, and potential impact. This is essential for malware analysis and uncovering hidden or obfuscated operations. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Code analysis. Code analysis typically refers to reviewing source code, which is not available when dealing with a compiled binary. B. Static analysis. Static analysis can be part of reverse engineering, but on its own, it doesn't allow for in-depth behavioral understanding. It's more limited and might miss dynamic actions the binary performs at runtime. D. Fuzzing. Fuzzing is used to discover vulnerabilities by sending random or malformed inputs to a program. It's not intended for analyzing a known malicious binary's behavior or structure. Therefore, the correct answer is C. An incident response team found IOCs in a critical server. The team needs to isolate and collect technical evidence for further investigation. Which of the following pieces of data should be collected first in order to preserve sensitive information before isolating the server? The correct answer is... D. Routing table. The routing table should be collected first because it resides in volatile memory and may be lost once the server is isolated or powered down. It provides critical information about active network paths and connections at the time of compromise, which can help trace attacker movement and lateral communication. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Hard disk. The hard disk contains non-volatile data that persists even after shutdown. It can be collected later without the risk of data loss. B. Primary boot partition. Similar to the hard disk, this is static and not subject to immediate loss upon isolation. C. Malicious files. These may be stored on disk and are less likely to disappear immediately. They can be collected after volatile data. E. Static IP address. A static IP is a configuration detail and not volatile. It won't be lost on reboot or isolation, so it's not the priority for immediate collection. Therefore, the correct answer is D. An organization has experienced a breach of customer transactions. Under the terms of PCI DSS, which of the following groups should the organization report the breach to? The correct answer is D. Card issuer. Under PCI DSS requirements, organizations that suffer a breach involving cardholder data must report the incident to the card issuer. The card issuer is responsible for coordinating further investigation and notifying other relevant parties, such as acquiring banks or payment processes. Why the other options are incorrect? A. PCI Security Standards Council 
The PCISSC creates and maintains the standards, but does not investigate breaches or receive direct reports. Reporting is handled through the payment brands and card issuers. B. Local law enforcement. While law enforcement may be involved depending on the nature or severity of the breach, they are not the primary contact under PCIDSS guidelines. C. Federal law enforcement. Similar to local law enforcement, federal authorities may become involved, but PCIDSS compliance requires reporting to the card issuer, not law enforcement directly. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Which of the following is the best metric for an organization to focus on given recent investments in SIEM, SOAR, and a ticketing system? The correct answer is A. Mean time to detect. Given recent investments in SIEM, SOAR, and a ticketing system, the best metric to focus on is MTTD. This metric reflects how quickly threats are identified after they occur. Improvements in detection speed are a direct reflection of how well these tools are integrated and functioning together to reduce attacker dwell time. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Number of exploits by tactic. This is more useful for threat intelligence or red team reporting, but it doesn't directly reflect the performance of detection and response tools. C. Alert volume. A high or low volume doesn't indicate effectiveness. It could mean noisy data or too many false positives. Alert quality and response speed are more important. D. Quantity of intrusion attempts. This metric tracks external activity but doesn't measure the internal team's ability to detect or respond, which is the focus after investing in SIEM, SOAR, and ticketing tools. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A company is implementing a vulnerability management program and moving from an on-premises environment to a hybrid IaaS cloud environment. Which of the following implications should be considered on the new hybrid environment? The correct answer is B. Cloud-specific misconfigurations may not be detected by the current scanners. When moving to a hybrid IaaS environment, Traditional vulnerability scanners may not detect cloud-specific misconfigurations, such as overly permissive IAM roles, exposed storage buckets, or misconfigured security groups. These types of risks require tools or configurations designed specifically for cloud-native environments. Why the other options are incorrect? A. The current scanners should be migrated to the cloud. Migrating scanners may help with proximity, but it doesn't guarantee the ability to detect cloud-specific issues. The concern is capability, not just location. C. Existing vulnerability scanners cannot scan IAAS systems. This is inaccurate. Many scanners can scan IAAS systems, especially those with agent-based or API-based approaches. The limitation is in what they detect, not whether they can scan. D. Vulnerability scans on cloud environments should be performed from the cloud. While cloud-based scans may reduce latency and improve access, the critical point is ensuring the scanner can understand cloud misconfigurations, not just where it runs from. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A security alert was triggered when an end user tried to access a website that is not allowed per organizational policy. Since the action is considered a terminable offense, the SOC analyst collects the authentication logs, web logs, and temporary files, reflecting the web searches from the user's workstation to build the case for the investigation. Which of the following is the best way to ensure that the investigation complies with HR or privacy policies? The correct answer is B. Ensure that the case details do not reflect any user identifiable information. Password protect the evidence and restrict access to personnel related to the investigation. To comply with HR and privacy policies, it's essential to protect user identifiable information and limit access strictly to those involved in the investigation. This ensures that the evidence is handled in accordance with data privacy regulations and organizational policy, maintaining confidentiality and integrity throughout the process. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Create a timeline of events detailing the date stamps, user account hostname, and IP information associated with the activities. 
While a timeline is useful for investigation, this step should occur after ensuring that data privacy measures are in place, including identifiable information before applying access controls could violate privacy policies. C. Create a code name for the investigation in the ticketing system. Code names may obscure the investigation topic superficially, but do not enforce privacy or restrict access to sensitive information, making this an insufficient privacy control on its own. D. Notify the SOC manager for awareness after confirmation that the activity was intentional. Notifying the SOC manager may be appropriate, but awareness alone doesn't ensure compliance with privacy policies or proper handling of evidence. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Which of the following is the first step that should be performed when establishing a disaster recovery plan? The correct answer is A. Agree on the goals and objectives of the plan. The first step in establishing a disaster recovery plan is to define and agree on its goals and objectives. This includes outlining what the organization aims to protect, acceptable downtime, data loss tolerance, and overall business priorities. These objectives guide all future decisions, such as selecting recovery sites, identifying critical applications, and allocating resources. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Determine the site to be used during a disaster. Choosing a disaster recovery site is important, but it comes after the objectives are defined, so that the site selection aligns with business needs and recovery goals. C. Demonstrate adherence to a standard disaster recovery process. Demonstrating adherence is part of implementation and audit, not the planning phase. It occurs well after initial goals are set. D. Identify applications to be run during a disaster. Identifying critical applications is a crucial planning step, but it depends on having clearly defined goals and objectives first to determine what counts as critical. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A technician identifies a vulnerability on a server and applies a software patch. Which of the following should be the next step in the remediation process? The correct answer is C. Validation. After applying a software patch, the next step in the remediation process is validation. This involves confirming that the patch was successfully applied, that the vulnerability has been remediated, and that no new issues were introduced. Validation ensures the effectiveness of the fix before closing the vulnerability case. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Testing. Testing should occur before applying the patch to ensure it won't negatively impact systems, not after the patch has been deployed. B. Implementation. Implementation refers to the actual application of the patch, which the technician has already completed. It is not the next step. D. Rollback. Rollback is only necessary if the patch causes issues. It is a contingency, not the normal next step after patching. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A security program was able to achieve a 30% improvement in MTTR by integrating security controls into a seam. The analyst no longer had to jump between tools. Which of the following best describes what the security program did? The correct answer is D. Single pane of glass. The security program achieved a 30% improvement in MTTR by consolidating tools and integrating controls into a single pane of glass. This approach provides a unified interface where analysts can access alerts, logs, and response actions in one place, reducing the time wasted switching between systems. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Data enrichment. Data enrichment enhances alerts with contextual information, but it doesn't necessarily reduce tool switching or unify interfaces. B. Security control plane. A control plane governs and enforces policies across systems, but is broader and more architectural. It doesn't specifically describe the user experience of tool consolidation. C. Threat feed combination. Combining threat feeds helps improve detection quality, but doesn't directly impact how many tools the analyst uses or improve MTTR through workflow simplification. Therefore, the correct answer is D. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.